All right, so the next one's a little bit of an interesting one. We're looking for buoyant force, and buoyant force is equal to the weight of an object if you have something floating. And we talked about this a few sections ago, but it also comes from the weight of the water that's being displaced. So it comes from Newton's third law and equal and opposite reactions one, um, that if a box is in water, a crate is in water, it pushes water out of the way, then the water attempts to push back, and then it gives a, a small amount of lift. So we can use our density formula to our advantage, because if I know that it's, it's floating in water, then that has a density that I can memorize or, or look up. Then the weight of the water is what we're looking for. And then volume of the water will help us connect all of these. So if I'm looking for the weight of the water, I can take this and stick it over one so it kind of looks like a proportion cross multiply and find out that the weight of the water is going to be equal to the density of the water times the volume of the water. Now I've got to be careful here. Ironically, this information is all about the crate and I'm really trying to focus on the water. Um, so my dimensions are going to be slightly different. Um, for the length and the width, that's no big deal because however long it is, however wide it is, the full crate in those directions will be displacing water. However, the height is different. So I'm intentionally putting a lowercase h there where the other ones were uppercase. Um, because I only want the part of the crate that's under the water. So think about it. If it's going to displace water, it has to actually be in the water. The top part of the crate is sticking above the surface. If anything, that would be technically be displacing air, um, which has nothing to do with what we're looking at here. So we want to look through our measurements. We've got length, which is fine. We've got width, which is fine. And this is capital H, full height of the crate, which is not fine. And so if I'm trying to figure out how much is underwater, then I want to take the full height, which was listed as 1.54 meters, and I want to subtract the part that's above the water so I can basically just slice that part off and see what's under. But I hope you notice here that that's not really going to go very well. Because, you know, that's, we have a negative answer. Meters and centimeters can't be subtracted in that way. So I need to convert this. And there are a few different ways to do it. You can slide the decimal, the, you know, set up a conversion fraction, however. Um, but, you know, want to remember, one meter is 100 centimeters. So think like cents and dollars. It's a similar connection. Um, and that means that this is going to turn into 0 0.1482. And so, you know, it's got a bunch of decimals, but that's what calculators are for. So if I can go ahead and find the difference here, this time it's going to work out because 1.5 minus 0.14 or something, that will actually give me an answer, a positive, real-looking answer on the calculator. Um, this difference, 1.3918. And then as it turns out, I don't need this for anything else at all. Basically, I just looked at that. So how much was cut off and then used what was remaining. From here, the weight of the water is equal to the density of the water. Now, this time, I'm looking around at my units. I got a bunch of meter stuff. And I've got newtons. And so there's what's called a weight density, which basically already has gravity built in. So I, I alluded to this earlier. Um, but if we take the 1,000 and multiply by gravity and, and bring it all together, then another version of this density is 9,800 newtons per cubic meter, which is handy because plugging in these other dimensions, they're all in meters. And so three dimensions with meters, meters cubed on the bottom there, means that basically everything is going to cancel except for newtons, right? So if you look, here's newtons. These cubic meters will cancel with one, two, three over here. And I'm looking for newtons, so that's fine. Then running all this through a calculator, apparently 24,424 and a half. 